Hello and welcome back to Everard Junction. As you can see, over the past month I have been quite busy. There is still an awful lot left to do, but it is very nice to have something that I can just about refer to as a station. Following this video I plan to do a relatively brief layout update video, as over the Christmas period I have acquired a couple of items of stock that might be of interest to you, and you might have noticed some of those running in the intro that just played. But without any further ado, Let's get straight on to the build, start building a station. For the edges of the platform, we're going to be using the uh, the Pico platform edging. Uh, this is the concrete type, which is uh, local to me. Uh, there's quite a few stations that use it, and it's something that I wanted to use on the original layout um, years ago. I've always wanted to uh, use the the concrete edging. I just like the look of it. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice design, and it will weather very easily. As you can see, I have the track raised up currently on this uh, four millimeter cork track bed. So to just put the platform edging straight next to it uh, will create a problem. The platforms will be too low um, for people to actually get into the trains. Now, heights of platforms vary around the country. There is a, a sort of a standard that should be adopted, but you will be able to find all sorts of places where it varies. And certainly going back into the past, it varies even more. However, I would like to try and get the platforms as close as I can to the correct height. Um, so I will be raising them up on some card, similar to what we've done with the track. Okay, well I've clipped the uh, platform sections together. As you can see, quite sizable. We'll bring a train in in a second so you can get a better idea of how long the station is. Um, but just uh, bring the platform edging up to the correct height. I've just cut up some uh, scrap strips of uh, plywood and then just glued and pinned them to the baseboard. These are about 3.6 mil thick. Uh, the road bed, or track bed or whatever you want to call it, is uh, about four mil thick. So this brings the edging up to the same height as the track. And when you bring a coach in now, the steps to get into the coach line up with the edge of the platform and I'm happy with that look. So that's how uh, we're gonna get going. Now it gets a little bit more interesting. We can paint the platform edging and weather it, glue it into position and then start to actually build the, uh, you know, the actual concrete that goes in the middle of the platform sides. These are purely just, just the edge. So we need obviously something here for the passengers to stand on. So as you can see, we have a train in the station and we can just about fit six coaches on that shortest platform. On the platform behind it, we should be able to get seven or eight coaches on there as I have plans to sort of have it finishing somewhere over there. And on the branch in this uh, terminating platform, we have just enough space for four coaches. Over at this end, I shall be uh, creating a scenic break, similar to how I did on the previous layout, where we'll create the illusion that the station continues into the fiddle yard or continues off scene, and that will allow me to park trains that are nine, ten coaches long in the station, and they'll still look right because we can just lose the bit that doesn't fit into the fiddle yard. This is a trick that railway modelers have used for years, the general idea being if you want to run long realistic trains but you don't want your station to dominate your entire layout then what you do is you put the station at the beginning or the end of the layout allowing you to have it half the length it probably should be but still run those long trains and have them sitting in the station and looking correct. So here you can see the uh, beginnings of the weathering for the platform sides. I've chosen to go for the uh, prefab concrete type, um, which started appearing on the network in the 1950s and 1960s, but there were other examples of concrete being used for platforms earlier than that. Out of the box, you can see it's a very sort of pale, um, sort of ivory color. And uh, while it's somewhat close to the appearance of fresh concrete, it certainly doesn't portray what this would have looked like after 30 odd years of service. So I've started the process of weathering it, and as you can see we're going for quite a heavy layer of grime. As it sits at the moment this is a little too heavy for my liking, but this is a necessary part of the process. 
These are acrylic, so nice and easy on the lungs, easy on the nose, and uh, you can paint for prolonged periods without getting a nasty headache or anything like that that you would typically associate with the enamel paint. So I tend to only really use the enamels for doing things like repaints and weathering. The reason for doing that is I do prefer the finish of an enamel paint. They just seem to go on that a little bit better, but the acrylics really are getting very good. And for things like this, and working on projects on the layout itself, buildings, roads, pavements, things like that, I pretty much always use the Vallejo paints. I've also started to use the uh, acrylic based rail match paints, certainly for buildings and things like that and uh, very pleased with those as well. I'm basically just trying to switch over to water-based acrylic paint as much as I can, but I would stress that I still very much use and require the good old enamels when it comes to working on the models themselves. So I've mixed uh, a 50-50 mix of the uh, Vallejo German Black Brown and the German Grey. Its colors complement each other quite nicely and you get this sort of uh, deep, dirt sort of colour. It's not that far away from sleeper grime to be fair. Quite pleased with it. So first thing is to just get the paint on there with a brush. As you can see this looks absolutely terrible but it doesn't matter because we're going to be going over it and making it look more professional in a minute. So to create the uh, sort of weathered finish, I'm using just a scrap piece of sponge, just going over the top of the model, and that dramatically changes the finish, makes it more even, and it just looks a lot better. But it doesn't quite get you to an airbrushed finish we, we want to avoid. If I just paint this with an airbrush, it will just look like it's been sprayed brown. I want some of that concrete colour to show back through the paint that's applied here, and I want the tones to be varied along its length. Something that you wouldn't want if you were painting you know, a livery or a colour scheme or something like that. But in the case of weathering, effects like this are quite useful. And there you can see, once it starts to dry, the effect of the sponge shows through and you've got a nice finish there and it doesn't look like it's been done with a paintbrush. Now you can see the sort of thing that I'm after. We've just reduced it down a little bit, but in all of the uh, sort of bits of detail and the corners and the edges where the dirt would build up in real life, that has stayed because the sponge doesn't really get into those areas with a light application. But you can see in the centers of the panels, it's just taking the edge off slightly. And then if we move further down, you can see it's uh, a little bit too much. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I get the effect that I'm after and then we can go back up and put it on the layout. So there we can see the uh, basic weathering is pretty much complete. And you can see how the tones vary along the length of the platform, with some of it being light and then some of it being heavy. And you can see also by using the sponge method We've avoided that manufactured spray finish that you would get from an airbrush and we've also avoided all of those nasty brush strokes that you would get by using a brush. I'm going to leave the top of the platform edging as it is for the moment. It will be easier to paint once I've completed the actual uh, platform surface that goes on the top and I've decided what I want to do. But once the edges are glued down and up against the trap work, it will be difficult to weather the sides, which is why I've taken the opportunity to do it now. I've just placed it back onto the layout and run a nice big bead of rocket card glue along the bottom. We're just waiting for that to dry. Don't have to be too concerned about any glue 
building up around the bottom of the platform edging as this will all be hidden by the ballast. While I wait for that to dry I'm going to put a sheet of card along the edge here that meets up with the retaining wall. Uh, the reason for doing that is so that the scenery that goes onto this area sits on top of this card that I'm about to put down and that will allow me to still remove this retaining wall as I've not yet added the interiors to the shops. I've made a bit more progress and as you can see some card has now been glued onto the baseboard and now touches the retaining wall. So we have a base for the scenery. I've just given it a coat of some very dark brown paint just to give it a bit of a base uh, layer of ground cover. And as you can see, we've just started to add some of the details. So I wanted to try and uh, sort of indicate that there was a disused section of line or a section of line that had been ripped out, as this was common sight at stations during the 1980s as British Rail rationalised its network. So what I've done is uh, I've bought some of these uh, sleepers uh, from Scale Model Scenery, they laser cut and they come on a sprue, and then I've just uh, painted them in some appropriate colours and glued them in such a way that it looks like not quite everything was removed when this track was ripped up. I think that should make for a nice little effect. So now we'll go ahead and add some ground cover and then we can move on with uh, adding litter and other details. Okay, so there we have the beginnings of the ballasting and the ground cover. As you can see, I've sort of mixed it all together as this is a, uh, an area that's not gonna receive very much maintenance, so the ballast will be quite poor. The colors are quite bright, obviously. It needs the much needed weathering treatment, but um, I'm happy with the appearance. So we'll go ahead and we'll glue that down and then I'll come back and we'll start doing the weathering, adding a bit of undergrowth and you know, waste, rubbish little bits of detail. Okay, there we go, it's now drying. That'll take at least 48 hours to dry, probably longer, depends on the time of year and the temperature up here. So we'll see how we go. Usual method, isopropyl alcohol from a spray bottle, 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water, and just a dash of washing up liquid or dishwashing detergent into that mix, just to help it soak into the stones that little bit easier. Last thing I've just quickly done before it starts to dry is just apply some of the Hatton's oil spill kit which I've used before over in the uh, reversing siding although you can't see it because half the fleet appears to be parked in it but uh, I have applied it straight over the wet ballast it's absorbed the glue so the whole lot should go off together once it's dried we can start doing the weathering obviously the colours are way off the uh, oil spill kit is just a grey colour because I believe it's just grout 
Uh, so that's the natural colour that it is. That needs painting. The ballast is too clean. This is too brown and earthy. So all of this will receive treatment from the airbrush once it has dried. The ballast has now dried. It took about four days in the end. It does take a very long time to go off, but it's now rock solid. Uh, so we can now move on to doing some painting and airbrushing, get those weathering effects on there. You can see the uh, different colours and stuff. They look a little bit garish. Some of it doesn't quite blend all that well. So it's important to weather this and it will just sort of bring everything together. We'll get that nice sort of uh, uncared for look that we're going for. Uh, I've also glued in this platform edge on the far side. Again, I've just used uh, rocket card glue to do that. And I just put some weights on top of it on a piece of wood just to hold it in position. To get the spacing, I've just used a piece of cardboard and just held that against the edge of each section of platform as we've gone so that uh, trains can go past nice and close without hitting anything.
Okay, the weathering of the track bed and the track itself is complete. And as you can see, it looks particularly grubby and uncared for. Plenty of oil leaks from these things ticking over for hours on end, waiting for departure. And we've just got a little bit of a hint of the weathering on the old track bed as well. That's most of the litter complete. I will add a few more bits and pieces. As you can see, I've tried to make it somewhat realistic in that the litter tends to collect nearer the station building, as this is where you will have more people tend to congregate. Fewer and fewer people are prepared to walk all the way to the end of the platform. Unless, of course, you're a railway enthusiast. So there's a few more bits to do here. Some more weathering, some more undergrowth perhaps a little bit more letter, a little bit more detail required, I think, in a couple of places here. But for the moment, I'm focusing on uh, gluing in the rest of the platform edging so that we can get the basic framework of the platforms installed. We're almost ready to ballast the uh, two relief lines here. There'll be a different color of ballast. If we look up here, I've sort of uh, tried to portray this area as being relayed. So we're gonna continue this limestone ballast down through here along this line and it'll be a nice contrast to this really very very worn down weathered filthy terminating platform the platform edges are now glued in 
took a few days to get all that done. Obviously it takes a while to dry and I've only got so many weights. So we're just quickly testing everything, making sure I haven't put the platform edging too close to the track. Quite pleased with how things are looking. Already it's starting to give me the, uh, the feeling that I used to get with the old layout. This was my favorite place to watch the trains go by, the entrance to the station. It's nice having the uh, platforms different lengths. Just gives a bit of variation, a little bit of variety. Okay, so we're about ready to do some ballasting. I've added a few small details. We've got some orange tubing running under the tracks to carry various cables, cosmetic cables, obviously. Um, and I've also added a few drain covers. I studied quite a few pictures of stations from the era I'm modeling, and the presence of drain covers is certainly something that uh, appeared in quite a few stations. So as you can see, I've added a few between the tracks and that will just be a little bit more to look at when looking at the station when it's completed. I'm also going to put some relay boxes between these two tracks, a bit more cable trunking and cosmetic cabling, and a similar sort of thing over the other side. I won't be balancing the point work just yet. I have plans to replace this single slip when the new bullhead version becomes available from Pico. Other than that, we can get going. I'm going to be using some lighter tones especially on the uh, relief lines just here running through as I'm sort of trying to show that this might have been relayed somewhat recently as you can see by the color of the ballast up there and then the fast lines will be a mix of uh, more sort of gray and brown and it should contrast quite nicely to this absolutely filthy bay platform that we have here. I didn't want to have this really weathered run down effect throughout the entire station. The ballast has now dried, 
I've just quickly installed a Pico bullhead buffer stop on the uh, reversing siding just there and the rest of the ballast all the way through the station has now dried. So now it's time to do some airbrushing. I'm going to be airbrushing it much lighter than the, uh, the branch here. This is very very dirty and I'm very pleased with the effect but I think it might be a bit much to put that through the entire station. So we're going to follow a similar theme to what we have over here albeit slightly heavier because trains obviously will be stopped in the station they will be leaving behind oil spills rubbish and deposits and things like that but we're going to focus on trying to keep the weathering light especially for the uh, relief lines the main lines be a little bit more heavily weathered and the three different weathering effects should contrast quite nicely Just completed some of the airbrushing reasonably happy with the results i am going for something a little bit heavier in this area as it is a station but uh, down here you can see it's a little bit too much it's uh, not quite what i was going for well there's a handy way to get rid of that all of this weathering i've done using acrylic paints and the advantage of that is i can come over here with one of these put it in some isopropyl alcohol Go back over to the, uh, the layout and just tone down the weathering slightly on the sleepers without taking it completely off. And we just lighten the weathering up slightly while still maintaining that uh, nice colour in the ballast. So I don't know about you, but for the effect I'm going for, I find this track here to look a lot better than, say, this track here. So I'll we'll go over this one and just tone down the sleepers just so it blends in with the type of weathering I'm trying to do. So we now have three different shades of weathering and they range from... Ugh. Ugh. God, it's disgusting. So I'll leave that to dry. A little bit more tinkering and bits to add, I think. Not quite finished with it yet, but for the most part, that is now complete. We're about halfway through the next stage of construction and that is to actually complete the platform surfaces. So what I've done is I've taken some uh, offcuts of Celotex which were left over from doing the insulation in the roof years ago and I've just cut it to shape so that it will fit in the space between the platforms. This gives the top layer the necessary layer of support without having to make endless little cross pieces all the way along the length of the platform. It's a much quicker and easier process. So the next stage is to then lay some card over the top of that and the Celotex will act as a brace preventing the card from sagging over time. I've deliberately picked a card that is slightly thinner than the edge of the slabs on the edge of the platform and the reason for doing that is the final finish is going to be um, using filler to create a sort of poured tarmac finish so there'll be no joins or anything like that. We'll have a nice tarmac looking platform and I can really experiment with the weathering and textures on that surface.
I've placed a length of timber over the top with a weight just to prevent the glue from expanding too much and pushing the card off of the top surface. I'm using Gorilla Glue as it works well with this type of foam and as you can see the glue does expand and it will easily lift that card off of the top surface so it's important to use some weights just keep everything in place while it sets. It's been a few days and I've been slowly progressing with this area moving things along as you can see we're just uh, filling in some of the imperfections and I've also completed the uh, the main part of the uh, platform on the far side. I've given the platform just a coat of a, a basic uh, standard sort of grey, nothing special, uh, just to add uh, a base uh, to the platforms and then we can do much more weathering and paving effects over the top of that and as you can see I've just been going through and filling in any little areas where perhaps it's cracked and it looks a little bit unsightly. I'm deliberately not going for a top-notch finish. This, after all, is a poured tarmac surface on a platform, and uh, with the exception of newly built stations, I can't think of any stations where the platform surface is perfect. Certainly the older the station, the worse the surface tends to be, and the more repairs, the cracks, and small potholes it has. And certainly 32 years ago, in the late 1980s, platforms were far from perfect, so we're deliberately not going to the full extent. We're just taking the, uh, the worst of the imperfections out where the card is, tying it all together in one section, but if there are any lumps, sort of cracks, potholes, little bits and pieces, I'm happy to include those as it will actually add to the appearance of a 1980s platform. I've just completed sanding, so now it's time to uh, get some grey out and just finish top coating these and we'll come back in a future episode and uh, add much more detail and weathering. I'd like to uh, get the uh, stones or the slabs on the edge of the platform, we'll get those in a different colour. It will make things look a lot more interesting and it's a bit more realistic too. But for now we'll just get these in grey and that will do as this video is starting to get quite long. So that seems like a logical place to stop for this video, as it is getting fairly lengthy now. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you perhaps picked up a few hints and tips. This is by no means how to build a station, this is how I've decided to build you know, the platforms and stuff like that. But there are so many different ways of doing it, different techniques, different ideas. This is what I've decided to do with the materials and the time that I had. For those of you curious about this uh, little prefab shed, 
This was supplied to me from good friend Dave over at Dean Park Station. Thanks very much, Dave. Looks perfect in place, and it sort of portrays the shed that was at the end of one of the platforms at Reading Station. I appreciate this shed looks completely different to the, st to the shed that was at Reading, but the idea of it being at the end of the platform just gives a little bit of a hint of Reading Station. And the same over here with these relay boxes that I've installed, placing them all in a line like that. There was a big group of those at one of the ends of the station. So it's just little things like that that just sort of hark back um, to that period in time on the British Rail Network. So I'll be adding a bit of muck and uh, graffiti to this and we also obviously need to add ground cover and various other bits and pieces. I will not be ballasting the slip and the point until the new bullhead items are released in the Pico range, deliberately holding off until they come out so that I can replace these two points here with points of the correct sleeper spacing. I'll leave a link at the end of this video that goes over to Dave's channel on the video that he produced where you can see a few more details about the construction of this small shed. So I'll leave you with a couple of running shots of trains going through the station and uh, with that I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.